Who said that? <laughs> Who was it? It was one of the guys. Bayer, guess where I snuck in? Was it? Was it? Who said it? Nice. You snuck into the city. Yeah. 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 It was Emily. Emily Smith. So we got the number of people that was like a booty call. Oh, All right, shh, let's, um, as much as I want that on YouTube, um, let's go focus back on the Pentagon Papers. Well, Daniel Ellsberg linked it to the New York Times, and he was promptly, um, <laughs> his trial did not last too long, right? He went on trial. Um, Nixon was unhappy about this. The ironic part about this was all the Pentagon Papers were talking about the administrations before Nixon. It was about Eisenhower's and Kennedy's and mostly about Johnson's administration. But what he hated was somebody being inside the government who wasn't loyal. It's like his worst fear. It yeah. Really is. Um, and so he wanted to prosecute this guy to the end. He ended up not serving any time because the court ruled that what he did was in the best interest of America. Usually if you commit treason, it's not pro-American, right? But the courts ruled that, that what he did, while technically probably illegal, served the best intention of America, and he did not serve any time in jail. It was pro-American treason. Uh, it was pro-American treason. <laughs> well, actually, I'm reading a, an article right now in Foreign Affairs magazine about... Um, about an American economist that we talk about Bretton Woods during World War II to set up like the IMF and the World Bank, and that this guy actually was working with the Soviets secretly, but he was doing so because he thought it eventually would help the strengthen the American position. So he was kind of like doing a treasonous act, but he thought in his head what he was doing was eventually better for America. That's an interesting question. Like, do you, yeah. if he found that out, would you charge him if he thought he was doing it right, or would you? Well. Just well, yes, you would, because um, I thought that by shooting all of them, I'd make them go to heaven faster. Yeah. I was helping them, yeah, you right? You can't make that argument. Right? Um, now, all right, let's talk about the end of the woe and bombing. Um, American forces were starting to withdraw uh, by the end of 71 and into 72. And we we're trying to bring the, the North Vietnamese to the bargaining table. And one way that we brought them to the bargaining table was um, through increased bombing. <laughs> the reason why we thought increased bombing, especially in Hanoi, would help, because it would put, well, this is the theory, it would put more pressure on them to negotiate. That look, you can get this war over and save some of your people, and look what we can do if we really want to. A lot of Americans argued that had we just been horribly brutal, we could have won this war. We could have just bombed, we just killed our body. We had that kind of capacity. We dropped more bombs during Vietnam than we ever did in the entire World War II. Um, I feel like that's a silly argument, though. Like, I, you know, everyone in every war if you just kill everyone. But... All right, welcome to my father's world. <laughs> um, what Nixon said in, the, in October of 72, right before, October of 72 is the month before the election, right? He claimed that peace was at hand. This was a really big part of Nixon sweeping in the 72 election. He won by a landslide. As we're going to find out, he also sort of cheated. But he would have won anyway. Um, so he starts the bombing campaign around Christmas. It was called the Christmas bombings. Um, and this is theoretically bringing them closer to uh, bringing them closer to the end of the war. And finally, the Paris Accords are signed in 1973. POWs were released. The theory of Vietnamization, we call it peace with honor, that we could withdraw our forces knowing that we had trained the South Vietnamese to keep fighting, that this was no longer our war. Critics of this agreement said, so what you're saying is we're withdrawing and letting others go fight. Why did this take so many years? Couldn't we have gotten the same blanking agreement four years ago? How many Americans and people died to get the same agreement that we got right now? I mean, think about it. The Vietnam War kind of just ended after all of it. One reason why it also ended was the Congress got so tired of it, they stopped funding most of it. And so Nixon didn't have a ton of choice.
So in March of 1973, the last American soldier is removed from combat. Two years later, in 75, Saigon, which is now Ho Chi Minh City, fell to the communists, and the, the war officially ended. And I'll also show you a YouTube video of the war in the Saigon, um, the end of the war in Saigon, and you can see American helicopters leaving the Vietnam um, embassy, and people like Vietnamese women trying to put their babies on the helicopter even without them to get them out because when the when the communists came through they, they they killed a lot of the people who were I mean they massacred people I mean it wasn't you know it wasn't pretty and they wanted to get their, their children out there are a lot of pockets of Vietnamese um, uh, now Vietnamese Americans in, a, in the United States um, they were called boat people because they got on boats and came over um, I actually, in, in Indiana, where I went to high school, had a lot of friends who were Vietnamese. I actually had a friend, and this is literally his name. And when I say the name Win, by the way, it's N-G, not W. Does that make sense? His name was Viet Nam Win. <laughs> Viet Nam Win. Um, and his brother, um, Mon Win, they all played tennis. They were really good. Um, and they were, they were Vietnamese, and they came over, and they were southern Vietnamese who came over after the war because they were scare of the communists. Um, and it's really sad. You see literally moms giving away their children to people they don't know because they know what's going to happen to them. And you see Vietnamese people trying to get in the American embassy and American soldiers are keeping them back because, you know, it, was, it would cause chaos. And you see Vietnamese people just try, diving to get onto the helicopters because they know what's going to be happening when Saigon finally falls. And it does. And Vietnam and America had very poor relations, obviously, for years. Um, our nations have become more normalized um, under the Clinton administration. John McCain actually went back to Vietnam and toured where he stayed as a, as a prisoner of war. Um, so Vietnam is still, I mean, it's this big... Every single time we get into something bad, we compare it to Vietnam, right? Um, so that's the end of the war. So let's talk about um, Nixon and his foreign policy, because Nixon's foreign policy is really funny.